all meetings work. The adopt the agenda be resolved with the agenda for the January 19, 2021 meeting. They accept it as presented with the addition of one Mason under the order of delegations. All in favor? Confirmation of minutes will also announce the December 15, 2020 regular meeting of council be hereby approved as circulated. Is going 
comprised out of many people from different backgrounds. There are people who are down 50% in their work, there are people without work, and there are people who are retired, like Steffi and myself. So all I'm asking you to reconsider, and my proposal was to stay the fees for one more year, and then raise it for six months, five dollars, until you have reached your goal. If you have any questions. So basically, Mr. Cameron, you're, you're asking just for one year free, free, basically, is that what you're after? Yes. Yeah. Give us time, way. give us time to get over the COVID. Yeah, because otherwise what you're doing with, with your suggestion is it would be five dollars every six months for ten dollars a year, basically, back to where we are. That's correct, but now. one year and then if you wanted ten years as of two weeks from now, ten dollars more, right? So we will do it into five dollar increments, but for six months. That's a suggestion, and I'm sure there are many other suggestions out there. Any other questions? No, sir. Any questions? No, it's not. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, are you aware of what some of the fees are in other parts of the province? Like, have you ever? No. no. Uh, we have done some extensive uh, research. Um, fees or taxes. We, we, we haven't even found out the difference yet. Perhaps you can enlighten us. What, what are fees and what are taxes? Now, when you raise fees by $40 a month, right? That, that's a huge jump. And when you when when you consider that what do we get in our parks? We have no running water other than well, treat it of course, but I'm not drinking it. If we have emergencies, we have to wait half an hour, fire ambulance, police. I haven't seen a police car in how long we live there? 15 years? We have no paved road. Snow removal, we pay through the park for it. The park does it themselves. And back in question, no, because to my knowledge, there is no other park like ours. Any other park is attached to the city. And when you look at any other park in the city, and then you start comparing costs, with the rise of the fees, our park becomes less attractive for people to move to. So, no, we have not compared it to other because we believe there are no other like that. We have, you have a prime property, but with a race, which makes it very unattractive for people to move to, you cutting off some income to this community, because this park will die. We have a very high turnover. Why? Because people underestimate the mileage. And then people have to stay home because they are snowed in. And on the other hand, people ask, okay, forty dollars more per month, but what do I get for it? Nothing. Mr. Um, do you believe it's fair that other residents have been having tax increases for the last fifty years and you've had not? Well, as I stated in my letter, I, I, I have served on many communities on, on, on boards and, and other things. Yes, it is fair to, to cover your costs as a community. But what I don't think is fair that you waited 50 years and then you want to do it with a sledgehammer. 
Does that answer the question? Yeah, that answers my question. And just to answer the question I asked you, like we've done the comparisons. So Service Blackwood is $25 per month. Uh, St. Clement is $44 per month. Brandon Ridge is anywhere from $51 to $132 per month. The city of Dauphin is $70 per month. Uh, Power View Pine Falls, $42 per month. Everywhere you look, it, it is way behind. And even if you make the argument that, you know, City of Brandon is different, which I think is a valid argument, to say that, you know, one person in our mobile home park would be paying $10 per month compared to $132.65 in Brandon, I think it's tough to argue that you're getting 10 times as much uh, value. So that would be my as as I outlined, uh, dear council member, in my letter, I'm, I'm, I'm not against raising uh, fees or anything. Communities have to live, communities have, communities want to thrive. And therefore it takes part of every community member. So we have to pay our taxes and we have to pay our fees and, and increase. Uh, and the essence of my letter is basically that yes, I agree with what you're doing, but not how you do it. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I, I do appreciate that we laid out a, a potential solution because often, you know, there's complaints, but there's no, right. well, what is the solution? Right? Mm -hmm. So I, I do appreciate that you've taken the time to think that through and, and provide that. Can you be, I don't know how long you've been in the trailer court there, or in that area. How many years you've been there? Uh, 15 years? From 2003. And 2003, 17 years. Your rent you paid to the owner yes. for your space, has that gone up? Every year, every year we get those 1.7% increase, which is 3 to $5 a month. So, yes, we pay our, our increases every year. Yeah, because these fees are charged to the owner, they're not charged to you individually. But now they obviously owners will do what they will as far as how they work it down. But this is not an intent to punish you as an individual. We had looked at these fees as the structure for that whole trailer court and what it did our compromises as our comp as far as our municipality goes. So we looked at it as a whole, not as an individual. So uh, we didn't want, we're not here to punish you as much as we're just trying to make sure that that landowner is paying the same equivalent taxation as everybody else in the municipality. Well, but we all know the water flows downhill, yeah. right? Sure. I'm so within, within weeks after the uh, owner hopefully will make the application for an increase, which is unusual circumstances for him, I believe. I'm not sure about that, but uh, coming to that point, that punishment, it feels for us like it because life has punished us in the last 12 months severely. And for us, Steffi and me, and for many in the park, we are retired people who chose that location for being affordable, to the extent, yes, there is a trade-off, long driving, more cost, gas prices go up, right? So, I, I understand where you people come from, I understand what this council tries to achieve. As I said, I just don't think this is the right time to do it. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, be resolved that the presentation by Mr. Bo Kentman with respect to Schedule B of the Bylaw 08 2020 be received.
the, the, the mobile homeowners is for municipal services. People would like to know what services they are receiving for this levy. One, uh, they'd like to know what services, activities, and things done are provided by the municipality. Mr. Go has already covered the fact that we do our own water by the province. We're controlled by the province. And we maintain our own roads. We don't use any of the roads to the municipality. We leave our car to go right off to a provincial highway. Uh, so they're just wanting to know answers for this, why these levies are. And they would like to know uh, after 2025, if the municipality is going to increase this beyond what you've already stated the fee in dollars or percent. And my question was, since 1971, how much has more bus enterprise annually per mobile been charged separately or all inclusive for any of these charges? I'm sorry, would you, I, 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 can't, I can't hear, I just couldn't hear the last sentence. Sir. Okay, since 1971, how much has more bus enterprises annually been charged separately or inclusive for any of these services? And I think these are pretty good questions from the seniors, and unfortunately I would have loved more people be here today, but I've got several full grants in the park, so I have the last several seniors under medical care and I'm also missing a few that are in the hospital at the moment. These people can't speak for themselves. I guess I'll start off with information as far as the what taxation is all about. When you look at services, and services aren't only what you see from your eyes as far as day to day. Yeah. Um, we have uh, an all-inclusive kind of situation with the municipality. We have an administration that increases cost every year. That's shared by everybody in we have the waste transfer stations that have costs that go up or down, whichever the case may be. And in this case, what we did last year is that we charged uh, our, our ratepayers uh, amount first per uh, staff per parcel of land for, uh, for garbage and that's a good example. Now $117 per parcel. Uh, the trailer park only pays one. So your neighbor down, down the road who has a house pays the same thing. The neighbor across the road pays 117. The trailer for being 117 dollars. So it wasn't charged for every trailer. So it's only charged once through that taxation. So all those things come together and, and we, we have costs that go, you know, as far as roads go, we have 130 people, ratepayers, that are adjacent to French and provincial roads that don't get any other services as well. So it's not a case of, again, we're not picking on one area. We're looking at a global situation of taxation for everybody. So it's tough. I understand that, and I think Mr. Cameron kind of pointed out very good points. Well, Jared, this is COVID-19 situation. So many people are out of jobs, and they're basically just surviving month to month. And there's so many stripping on pensions right now, or whatever benefits they get from the government. They're just wondering why you guys we received it late in January, this notice, to take effect on February 1. They want to know why such a short notice for us to absorb this and what the municipality can do to not keep causing more distress already in a party. Like I said, I've got enough cold reds, I've got people in the hospital, and I've got seniors under medical care. They can't exit their mobiles. They can't come here and ask the best office questions that they'd like that. Well, people have been in that park 31 years. We appreciate that. There's so, I mean, all of that basically is they're asking me, can you maybe send out to the... The problem is we get no correspondence from this municipality. Anybody north of Turkey seldom gets any correspondence from any of you. I don't know why. Just because our postal code is R seventy five point one should not exclude us from ever receiving any correspondence from this municipality. I've lived here fifteen years and I've yet to receive anything except the election. Well, we'll have our administration check that out, but my understanding is everything goes out with postal code and mail it out and it's up to the mail to get it where it is not. Well, it has to be sent from this municipality first for us to receive it. 
Love. And I have been guilty. Our tenants addressed this before that brought another list with their addresses, but the R75 Wi-Fi should not be excluded from communications from this minister. I think it's fair to say that it's not. Right? Yes. We, yeah, we receive zero except election years. Yeah, but you have to remember that you're not right payers, right? So yeah, but the, 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 part. the notice is going no, to, the, to the owner. The owner is the right payer. Yeah, except he's collecting from the tenants. Yeah, so I, I think your complaint is directed at the wrong person here because there's certain notices we only have the ability to send to rate payers. Mm -hmm. And by law, we have to send them to rate payers. And, and you don't qualify as rate payers. I completely get that these costs are being passed on to you. This is a, you know, a technicality, unfortunately, that I think you need to talk to the owner and make sure that when those notices arrive, that they are distributed to us. It's not. But I still don't think there is Uh, Julie has 
I don't know. You, you would have had to call the office and get your phone number and email address uh, listed on the connect. They send you notices out probably. Well, and I can check the email and see if that yeah. is on the back of the space. That's the really easy. You would have just recently got a, if you were signed up, you would have got a notice about the public hearings for the, the fiber install. Yeah, unfortunately, Sorry. I can't discuss that because we've already got legal contracts with the IRF for the whole park. And it's all installed in the park. So I don't know how the IRF is going to be dealing with that because they have a binding contract with us for two years. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't trying to get into that. No, I was just trying to, to, to establish that would be one way to know if you sign up for the act. Yeah, I learned because I work here and I learned, you know, to hear things like that. But, um, unfortunately, I think you know, between the IRF and the IRF, the lawyers don't have to know. Basically, their concerns is information is a powerful tool. You don't have to, they can't comment and they can't connect with you people to find out what is really going to be. But I guess what, one thing we don't want to get mixed up again is that we're not charging the individuals mm -hmm. in the charitable. We are sending this to the owner of the park. Which, so we sent a letter out to, to yeah. the individual saying we're going to pay money. The owner could eat it. The owner could. Could eat it. That happens in business. All it does is one, two calls from these individuals stating, quote, the owner has illegally in increased our law without rental trends notification. So I'm saying that the yeah. owner has not had an increase in 50 years oh, on this fee. So yeah, but that's to not, say that it needs a special increase? Yes, okay, but I mean, we still got to follow the law. I, I can't bring the law. I can go to Metrosmith today and no one will think, but we still have to apply for the permission to increase, including myself, not rent increases. Because that's the only way it's going to be collected, is it not? Because it will be paid to Roy or to more of us enterprise, and then he issues two separate checks, right? One to the municipality and one for the property taxes. It's not, no. not how it works. That's correct. He provides a monthly <coughs> check for the lot rentals, and then he provides an annual check for his taxes. Yeah, and now would be a check for his letter, so that would be three? No, the lot rent that he pays yeah. for the last, however, well, for 50 years, whoever yeah. has owned the estates has yeah. paid $10 per trailer per month. Okay, that was what the levies were. Yes. And see, tenants were not aware of what percent is that is, what percent, you know, the municipalities charge. We're not. And I'll be honest, that's not necessarily up to you to know. That is between your landlord and the municipality. And then how the landlord chooses to establish those fees on his renters is between the renters and him. Mm -hmm. And this is where we run into difficulty in what we can provide to you as renters versus what we can provide to the landlord. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we are limited. Our, any of our dealings, our bylaw is applied against the landlord and then how he chooses to deal with it with his renters is up to him. So the fact that whoever has owned Brandon Hills Estates for 50 years has been comfortable in only paying $10 a month to the municipality for 50 years um, doesn't necessarily mean that he has to directly apply any new increase to you. They've had 50 years of a very comfortable rate. Well, I but now that will be his choice, and I'm not saying that he won't ultimately pass it down to the rate payers, but he doesn't have to, and he doesn't have to do it in full amount. If he were to decide that he was going to raise your lot fees by five dollars, and he was going to assume the other five dollar charge, that is his choice to make. Yes, but I still have to forward it to them. I have to explain no, everything. Is everything no, that is collected in the park goes to the If your landlord chooses that he's going to apply this to each person, then yes, there will be rules that you will have to follow. If the landlord chooses not to, then there is nothing that has to go to the rentals. I know the park is not living at $245 a month. I guarantee you there's no profit at the end of the year. Just running that well system through the government and everything else. You can come out in the rent or in the pieces of the rent. So no one's left comfortable living in that home that will allow that's why it's had so many frequent owners. But again, he's trying to pitch the lot rent down considering we're 23 kilometers away from the nearest city or 22, 24 kilometers from the nearest town. He's kept it with a reason. We're just asking questions as to why now during COVID-19 with everybody laid off, why this is suddenly an urgency to get this done. So basically, so if you can get some answers, then I can share with the tenants and they themselves. No, we'll feel peace in the listening. Thank you. 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 That's fine. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thanks, Darcy.
is this increase going to be affecting people moving the trailers over the park? Is that going to affect? You're not going to be able to do a levy if that trailer park's gone, right? You might be able to cross that property if somebody tears it all up and builds houses there or whatever you want, but it's going to affect it. And it's going to draw down the line. It's going to move people like these guys from the park. I can afford to live there, right? Two healthy incomes coming in and out of their house, one year old family. We're going to add young people are, are moving out of that airport because of this, because of this municipality, because of you guys making these city cities levies, because they know that they aren't going to be able to afford it. I'm a young person, I understand that. I was going to buy a house in Omisa and I bought there thinking it would be a better idea. I should have bought a service, basically. That's how I see it. It would have been cheaper. Um, this levy is going to work. I appreciate you guys clearing it up to me that I don't have to pay it, the airport has to pay it. And the thing is, you guys do have to understand is they cannot, by law, increase it enough to cover this cost. Right away. So it's going to be out of his pocket. They can never increase it enough to charge me. And it's law right in my opinion, it doesn't affect me at all. Really, I pay it, and I get it all back anyway, at tax time, basically. That's just how it works for me. Anyway, so it doesn't affect me. Increasing it doesn't affect me, but it's going to affect everybody else. I'm just the only person who came to this meeting, thought I'd figure it out, and I understand it. And I do understand it. This makes sense to me. And you guys cleared it up by saying that it wasn't directly towards me, because all I got is this. Put my put my book. That's all I got. And this letter is saying that I was going to have to pay a monthly fee of twenty dollars in twenty twenty. So you did clear it up and say the communication is incorrect. And yes, I know I am part of that thing where we get updates and stuff like that. And it's very easy to know what's coming in, what's coming out, what you guys have changed, what you guys have to find. So um, moving forward, I guess uh, hopefully this doesn't affect the trailer park too much because I do like living there. But if it does affect it too much, I guess we'll have to move my trailer. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Matthew Ferrer. Matthew Ferrer. F B A Joe. Okay. Matthew. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Yeah. And thanks for speaking. Um, the question that I would have is, where are you going to move your mobile? I probably move. I I purchased properties in Glenwood already, sort of because of this, um, because of knowing the rate increases, because of knowing what's changing. Um, just from the fact of what I've seen of this council and of this municipality, I just decided to move out of the municipality. Um, soon, I plan on staying here for as long as possible, but my plan is to move just because of what I've seen of the council and what I've seen of the municipality. Have you investigated the rates? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand it all. I, I don't figure out I'm not done man. No, I'm not I, saying I, you are. I'm just saying that I think it'll cost you more money to live there. So. Yeah. No, it, it will cost me more money to live there, but it, at this point, I, I own it, right? Like, it'd be different if you guys, if the BMS Holly owned the airport, then you could buy a house or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, this levy, like they said, we don't get anything from the municipality. And you, I understand that you guys can't really give us anything. I get it, you guys, like, recently with this rain weather, the school bus still comes. The beautiful, like, the school bus that goes over and still comes to our river. And it is a fucking mess, excuse my language. But it is a mess, it is covered in ice. Yet, I mean, the plow can come in and salt it quick, or, or like anything, that, like, I mean, some kids can get around by a school bus because you guys don't, you guys turn a blind eye to that part. That's how I see it. Can I speak to it? So, I live in the rural. I live in the rural. I'm a, a large landowner in this municipality. Um, I pay garbage on every single piece of property. Um, you guys pay one garbage, 117, and I'm paying one plus 19 dollars in all my quarter sections. Um, there's 30 some families or houses that live there. Um, your guys' rotor is icy. My yard's icy. Yep. I don't expect anyone else to come, or the municipality to come sand my, yep. my place. So, I well, then I don't know if you can stand here and, and just say that, because that's not how, and like, 
they said there's 132 other people that live on highways. Yeah. And that's where they chose to live. Right. And that's where you chose to live. Yeah. No, I understand that. No, I just, that's, I'm just trying to make it aware. Yeah, and I guess it comes back to it that we deal with the owner of the land. Right. And that you, unfortunately, like you have access to the, as far as we're concerned, the waste transfer station. Right. Where you wouldn't have to pay a garbage fee to them. But right. that's your, their agreement with the owner of the trailers there. Right. So that's beyond what we can do. Yep. But you do have access if you wanted to. If you have anything to go to the waste transfer station, you can go there with no, no yeah. problem. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's a difficult situation when you start putting it all together and saying, yeah, well, it's, it's not us trying to, I guess, that we're not paying money. Yeah. That's not what we're after. Yeah. We, what we're trying to do is make sure that we get in charge of the right amount for taxation. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, so. Sorry, and a simple thing of uh, school taxes. Everybody pays school taxes, and that place pays one school tax on so much dollars. It's not on every trailer. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like, uh, he's getting a good deal. 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I just, like I said, I didn't know that these taxes, these fees are being directed at us individually or if it's going to. Roy, owner of the land, through his tax. The owner. Is it, when you look at this, it looks like yeah. we're the ones that have been receiving the bill, yeah. so yeah. to speak. We have no controls or what happens from there, but it, it is assessed to the owner. Okay, so it's going to be whatever Roy deems necessary to help cover his costs. We're not going to see the actual bill. And no. He can do anything to it. Can you legally do that? That's the only thing. He got some legalities too as far as rental charge. So he can say it's a special thing, but you know, it's up to the government to say whether he can charge you more. We don't know. Yeah. That's not a, we don't know that. Okay, but no, he, I just wonder whether it was separate from his taxes yeah. or no. Well it's just separate from his taxes, but it's still charged to him. You will you will not individually receive a bill from us. That's what we were kind of wondering. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it's like, okay, what are we getting for services for this extra payment for, yeah. for extra money we have to put forward? So, okay, it's very few of us actually go to Wallace or where we yeah. go to Brandon, it's closer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, it's just kind of that thing that I was wondering for is why are we being charged fees for traders? The next time you have some concerns, I would suggest you call the office. These yeah. people would be more than happy to discuss that kind of stuff with you at any time. Okay. okay. Like I said, that was just kind of a big thing, is who is going to be absorbing this Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Federation of Canadian Municipalities have sent out information dated January the 7th, January the 8th, and January the 11th. The Hudson Bay Brood Association has sent out their membership letter, and the Council's information as municipality has never been part of that. Manitoba Conservation and Climate sent some information on our Long Mesa public water system. Manitoba Good Roads sent out their 2020 competition awards, and the Game Council has already extended its thanks to our public works members who helped us to receive and uh, be recognized for the best kept road system. Manitoba Water and Wastewater have announced a new member. Multi-material stewardship in Manitoba has provided information on what the 2021 funding will be. In previous sessions, Council have considered uh, entering into a Prairie Lake service agreement for fire. And I have included a copy of what has been considered between both municipalities and Prairie Lakes is prepared to enter into it. So uh, we'll execute it once they send their copy to us. Prairie Mountain Health has sent their December and January newsletters. The province of Manitoba has sent out a news release with respect to its small, bridge, small business bridge program. Southwest Horizon School Division has sent out its invitation to their annual general meeting, which will take place on February the 10th. And Statistics Canada has sent out their newsletter for December. Okay, uh, be it resolved that the above noted communications be received. So we please move them. Councilor second, Councilor Harvey, discussion. <coughs> do, do um, thank you. you, used to go to that meeting, Dave, did you not? The school division, sorry? Pardon? Have you ever been to the AGM of the school division? I have gone in the past. Okay. I didn't this year. I just curious if someone was going to go in on it or not, I could maybe, um, whatever. Yeah, that's okay. Is it not virtual this year? Yeah, it's virtual, but yeah, I just thought. Yeah, it's always going to happen. I didn't know. They go through their budget and we give them a chance of what it is. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. 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 Okay, we'll move on.
on some of these, but I, I think Mr. Kennedy's here. I, I don't see why we couldn't bump him up. Probably to help counsel with respect to the um, agreement that is up there. question um, regarding is there any extra fees is there a router that the person has to buy to have in their home or a modem or something like that sure so uh, the, the zero dollar install fee gets you in your house uh, we call it up but so you're at a live service um, and from there uh, it's, it's up to the homeowner of, we of course sell routers and uh, Wi-Fi mesh systems and all of those things but um, or people have them already. Or, so we get it. We get it live, and then that other equipment in the house, routers, is really the main yeah. one. Um, is on the home. Okay. So there isn't any additional fees for extra for the router from you. If we've got our own, that's fine. If you've got your own. Okay. Yeah. We'll Good. we'll offer to people what we offer, and uh, they can take it or leave it. Okay. Chris, depending on where we are here, you can remove your mask. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. it would be mumbling. Well, it would be easier. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, Chris, did we not pay, on top of the install, did we not pay a $264 uh, modem fee? Uh, so, I, I, so, so all that happens historically with RF now is you, we bring it into your house and then uh, are you, and the $264 thing sticks out to me because I'm wondering if it's a wireless connection. Because we also do wireless. Um, that's exactly how much we charge. So maybe it's just a coincidence. But uh, we get it to your home. And then... Well, you, you have your box installed in the house. Yeah. Is there not a, a fee that, that we've been charged for that $264? Uh, On top of the, say, if I paid $799 plus $264. Unless that was a rotor, unless that's your rotor that you're talking no, about. No, we, we still have to supply our own rotor. Yeah. Because your guy told me I needed one with 2,000 speed. Yeah. Let me think. Uh, I'll, I'll find out about your case because I, the $264 thing doesn't, the rotors we sell, the one that's close to that number, you're saying it's not the rotor, I believe it. So I'll, I'll go find out. But 
Okay. And then there's there's still if the people want the home phone service. That's right. Yeah. There's still a fee for that year too, right? Yeah, we we have that in this schedule of the uh, of the home phone. Uh, I'll, the home phone for our is a, it's called a lost leader. We offer it. it it's, we find most people are paying. Thirty or fifty dollars for a home phone service, and I think our base rate is nineteen ninety nine. And I apologize, I'm not sure if that's what's in the schedule or not. We need it out or more, but um, if that's an option again. That if you have home phone, we try to make it more cost effective. And again, it's the reason to to lost lead for us. We try to sell the fiber connection, the internet connection, and then hoping to save you a little money on the phone and makes the price more palatable. Yeah, I guess I, we want to make it clear. But our investment into this is two hundred thousand dollars on the basis of the hotel just to get it to the house. Yeah. That is the only connected to the home. That is it. Everything inside is the responsibility of the homeowner. So you might want to get a home phone, be extra. They want to want to get a special motor or a more power for a router. All that kind of stuff is up to the homeowner. That's right. And I mean that, that they can deal directly with right now. We won't be involved in that. Anymore. A uh, couple questions. I've had some calls, concerns with, I know the map that we received, some of the lines didn't go to some of the locations. So if you live off them locations, uh, are they still going to get, and I'm thinking some that I've talked to, they're, they're two miles down the road where there's nobody else that would be connected, and will they be connected within three years? Yeah. And so what happens if they do not connect now and they sell and somebody else buys it and then they want to connect and that's that's one of the concerns and would they be done with the three within the three years or would there be a hold back in funds till all in places are hooked up or going to run i guess um, one of the questions yeah on. so I, I to take to take uh, your first question about um if you're two miles off the the path so we, we chose that path we did significant research to see who would sign up and their interests and yes or no's and and a lot of that had come in previous to even this, right? Obviously, we've hooked up a number in your, in your municipality already, and then we had a bunch of uh, people that may be interested. And I think this would push, I, I truly believe this will push at least 100 over the edge if it's a zero install fee. And I'm, I'm talking in year one. I, and I, I think it'll be more than that. I just, uh, um, so here, here's the way we normally do it. Uh, for our ROI purposes, if our line is within a mile of you, you're, you're probably a, a regular install fee, so that's seven ninety nine number that you normally have. Um, the way we picked those routes was based on the people that reached out to us and made interest. Those routes, um, I would say they won't change significantly because those would be what we call backbones, and then you branch off from each one there to go. So the answer is yes. I, I assume within two years, and that's why I think that's another thing we want to talk about here quickly is I, I think within two years we'll have everyone hooked up that wants to be hooked up. But you're saying if they're within a mile, but what happens if they're in two miles? Or is, are they going to pay a fee on top of no. that? So under this agreement, everybody within your municipality is going to have a zero install fee for the for the time we decide. And I, you know, I put in there seven years or something like that. I, I just don't want three, to three years you say. forget and I forget yeah. you change and I change it. I thought it was three years. Yeah, so the contract, we guarantee the contracts for three years of the same price points. And but the install's not three years. Uh, He's fine. No. I'm talking longer than that. Yeah, I'm saying a zero install fee for longer than three years. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I'm talking about the, the plowing in the line. Bob, so within, Everybody that wants it within three, the deal was three years you should have it in, right? That was the... I, yeah, and, and to be honest, we want, the, the, the $200,000, don't get me wrong, is meaningful because it accelerates it. We want the hook up more than the $200,000. We want the monthly to go on first. So our, our job too out of this is to go and we hope, we hope all of your homes signed up and that we're working in the RM for the whole year this year, right? Yeah. And, and that would be so... That, that's our hope too. To, again, the two hundred thousand dollars is wonderful, and it accelerates this and makes us come here quicker and maybe expand quicker, so those other people are going, "Hey, it's here." Um, but our goal too is to hook up as many as we can. And I suspect yeah. that, uh, from what we know today, that in 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 this construction season and next construction season, twenty twenty two, that 
will have those people that want it to the Senate contract. Yeah, so Bob, so I asked a question the other day to Joni and she passed on to Chris that I said I had a ratepayer ask, um, so what if I don't hook up within the three years, but he, but they paid the, the levy, um, do I get it for, for zero install fee five, six, ten years down the road? And that's the question we asked, and that's, Chris kind of said, you know, five or seven years. He doesn't want it to be perpetual, right? Right. Okay. But that's, I thought that's what... Yeah. That's great. I, I just thought it was three years, five years. Yeah, I yeah. Thought it was and I think that's something we have to yeah. Yeah, come up with here today. Or yeah, yeah. So. yeah there, has be, there has to be a stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there's going to be situations, and there's going to be uh, some these seniors that are out there that don't want to get up and up. They don't know anything about internet or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that may not. And you know, five or six years later, they want to sell the property. And they only pay them under tax. Yeah. Yeah. Going down the main highway doesn't help us. It's 
If you only have to come one mile or two miles back to the highway to look at those people, and now you're one or two miles closer to these ones, right? So mm -hmm. uh, our plan again is we want to hook up as many people as fast as we can to get those monthly, those, for our business plan, those are the, the install fees. Again, this helps us expedite it. I think got some people excited, a few probably excited in their own way, but mostly excited to get it in, in the positive way. But, uh, so yeah, it, we'll branch off of that wherever people choose. To make it, whoever pushes us to branch off of that, that's what we'll do. Yeah. So, Will this all be directional drilling or will it be plowing or what is it? Both. Both. So, yeah, you know, the, I'll, I'll put it this way is that uh, um, our, we're probably one of the very few out there doing this rural fiber uh, plan. There's lots of reasons for that. There's lots of reasons not to do it because, yeah, there's the construction side of it and there's bringing together a lot of stuff. But um, doing rural builds, it's fun. People go, well, if you can do it in the arm. Oh, and then why, well, you said, well, why can't you come to the city, right? And I go, well, I got to drill every meter in the city. And to drill a meter, uh, let's all, I'll use contractor rates. These aren't our internal rates, but I'll use those. To get somebody to drill something, they know it's it's 30 to 50 bucks a meter. Um, we have our own crews, so it's not that much. But plowing, you can get somebody to do it for three or four bucks a meter. So doing rural builds is actually can be more cost effective, right, per, per meter. So um, it would be both. Cool. We'll drill the approaches and, and then we'll, we'll plow, plow the ditches. I think you asked my question really, but this is all done by your own people. You will not hire it up to other firms? Yeah, we, we have this. Uh, so we're all the way, to, we're drilling the in here right now, so we're all the way that way. But we, we do use some subcontractors. In, in this case, I see us doing all of it ourselves. You, you may see. We hire something to go do from the from the ditch to the home or something like that. For the most 95% of the 99% 99 of the OBR right now first. So if you go through uh, an example, if you go from the road allowance and down into the into the farm yards as an yeah. example, will that be all directional drill so they won't be built, telling up their property or uh, it, it mostly uh, the, the rule of thumb, let's say, we have what's called a sneaker plot. Um, and I don't know if you little zones so uh, they they do the strip and don't get me wrong I, I know I know my grandpa's one of them that strip is important enough to him to be angry about it and ask him to drill it but the cost to drill it you just you just work with the homeowner and, and we, we sneak or plow we call it to the home and it's 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 very it's a it's a line this big and, you know it's like a phone line it's the long phone line right so we that little sneaker it's, it's minuscule, vibrating, uh, sheer put in the ground, yeah. 16 inches, and literally you can be gone within uh, one year. Yeah. It just blends back in. And that went, sorry, that went right from your house? Right, right down, to your right house? Right down the engine lane. And then right to your house without sneaker plow? It's sneaker plow, okay. just a vibrating ditch wedge. Yeah. Goes in the ground, and just right from the, where the directional drill vendor. Yeah. Right, right to the house. So be a handhold in the ditch, that, say at your, at your lane, your approach, and right from that handhold, we'll, we'll use that small machine to get to your home. And you work with each home more to figure out where on the property you want it and where it goes into your house and all the different things. Any soil disturbance, whose responsibility is that to, like if you run the person's property? And, and you're saying with the plowing it in or ditch twitching or whatever the case may be, any soil disturbance, is it the homeowner's responsibility to then, you know, resurface if they have to or recede or? Yeah, so we, we, uh, we work with the homeowner. It, it, our guys are built to receiving and those kind of things with people that ask us to or work with them. Um, the, the big piece of that is, uh, I'll say 90% of people go, I'll do that, or I'll do it. I'll move with and deal with that, and I'll see if I need to. Um, but our guys, our completion crews have that ability to, to help you fix it. And put down the grass seed, let's say. We're about to come out of water for you or anything. Like no, that, no, but, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I guess to, just to add on to what you're saying, like, if you're plowing in a ditch and you get into 
soft ground, let's say, or whatever. Because we know in one year, like it's by the next spring, sometimes it settles more. Do you come back and do some of that? Yeah, it's here. So if, if uh, uh, Brett will know that our, our bigger companies and agencies and, and insurance, those kind of insurance things, I'll say, I'll say what happens is you end up taking up rocks in some cases, depending on where you are in the country, right? But uh, we'll come back and remove rocks or if there's if there's something that's going to end up being you know, for sleds or, or whatever whatever it is, um, we come back and uh, we try to fix it when we're there, of course. But if there's settling or something that is unreasonable and, and makes sense to come back to, we do. Oh, go ahead, uh, If someone uh, didn't really want the service, but thought it would be something to have for resale, like is there, can they have it in and not get monthly bill and so on, but it's there for the next? Uh, so, it's a good question. Now, we haven't done that before, Sean, but uh, I think, here's the whole thing, if it's, uh, uh, here's the problem with that in the rural areas, I might have to run two miles to, to go over the home, so I, it, 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 for, for no income at the end, and, and I think I think the answer to that simply is that the infrastructure, that map that we've sent, um, if they so decide in six months or within the whatever period we decide, um, then, and here's the thing, we work with them on something like, hey, listen, we're gonna sell next spring, so we should get it in this house because they want it and, and all of that good stuff. I think the easiest answer there is just to say, sign up as you want it, and uh, just putting it in the house is, I, I could see that, I don't know what West Wind and Moe said, but I could see that in an in a urban build where you go to every house. Um, the problem with making that a rule in the rural area is it, it may not be just from the curb to the house in 10 meters or 20 meters, it may be two miles or five miles, and that starts to get you're doing work for me. No, no reason for your salaries. Would there be hubs in for that for further? Uh, yeah, so we, we build it, uh, the way we build our network, uh, you'll see it every mile road, um, a handhold. Uh, so it's just a, just a small, could be 12 by 12. Could be, it, there are all different sizes depending on where you are. But as soon as that's on the ground, um, we don't have to dig up the fiber again. We can come from that site and head this way or that way or whichever way we need to. So the infrastructure is always there and ready to expand. Um, what you'll see with, uh, you know, I know HB and I went through your municipality. Fiber reels are 8 or 12 kilometers long. A lot of people are just, they're trying to get from point A to point B, right? So they're trying to get from Brandon to Wall East and they don't care about any rural people in between up and up and up anyways. We build a different. So we build it, we build it wanting those people to look at. It's not that we don't care about Brandon or all East, but we, 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 we care about the rural hookups as well. I think there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of good things to do that. So. Well, is, Go ahead. Sorry, is the monthly, pardon me, is the $380 that the municipality are going to pay, is that not part of a hookup to every single, like not to hook the house up, but to get it to the property line? And if you're saying, well, to the property line, you know, if they decide that they don't want to continue and say, no, I don't want to hook it up at this time, is it the $380 that they're going to be paying through this $200,000, does that not get them to the homeowner's property line? I know it won't get them to the house sure. if they don't want to hook it up, but in essence what you're saying, you're giving us two different ideas going on there that... Yeah. So I, I, the way I would answer that is uh, it gives them the ability to have it up there front of their property or into their home. Uh, to go around the, I guess if you went from one end of your municipality to the other and just ran fiber down each road, it would probably be four million dollars. And you'd, you'd have no revenue at the end if yep. uh, Fred yep. didn't hook up, Fred yep. didn't hook up, or, you know. Um, so, so really what this is, is uh, let's put it this way, is, is with that significant bill, and I'll, I'll, use, I'll use another, just pick another municipality that we're in, but Without that infrastructure that I've shown you on that map, um, uh, the timeline of hookups 
would be a lot more significant weight. Let's say it that way. So, yeah. so if, if I get what you're saying for sure. If it, it's easier if you have it in front of every home today, and then they go, yeah, sure, and then you run there. But the cost of that for everybody is is is, is a big. big yeah, cost. and I, I I understand that. I just from um, a client perspective in the municipality where we get callers saying, well, if I'm paying X amount of dollars, but I don't want to hook it up right now, they're not going to bring it to my property line, so why am I paying the $380 on taxes? Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure you will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I and I think that's the conversation we need to have is how long are we making this? Right. Yeah. Right? Available for you to hook up. I don't think we can expect them to put it to every door and people not no. use it. I don't think yeah. that's feasible. No. Um, I had another question, Chris, yeah. from uh, a farmer. Yeah. Um, there's lots of tile drainage goes on in this RM. Um, also, like cleaning out ditches. Yeah. Um, who's in charge of the locate? And if we, I, I've asked this question before about uh, if someone hits it. Sure. Um, the fellow, maybe it was you or the other fellow, that he said it was pretty easy to fix, but um, I guess we need to have that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That so, and that contract or what's happening there? Yeah, and I think, I think we do, but it's on, on us. So let, let's put it this way, it's, it's, uh, as much as we're not Bell or MTS, we have the same much smaller infrastructure. So we have a locator, well, we have two locators that are full-time people. That, we're out of call before you dig, we're on all of those things, right? So if, if locates are done, we do them ourselves, go mark them if needed, all of those things, just as all the other utilities do. Right. Um, if it's hit, uh, here's the whole thing, like if it's, uh, this doesn't happen very often because we're a meter in the ground, right? It's, it, it takes, it, it takes a mistake probably <laughs> to, to, for it to happen. And those mistakes happen. Um, uh, like we come fix it and do it. Let's let's put it this way: if, if somebody was negligent, and uh, let's use you guys have a contractor that's doing for I'm just making it up, but a water line, and they decide to change their route without asking, then you know we take it up with them. I'm sure um, it, it gets hit so rarely. Like I'll, I'll tell you, our our fiber's been hit uh, twice this year, and we have 5,000 kilometers of fiber in the ground. Manitoba and Saskatchewan, right? It's been hit. And both times, I can give you a, both times it was a contractor that knew where our fiber was, and, and it was, one of them was just, it happens. They hit a rock when they're in the ground, yep. shot sideways, and something like that. So we worked with them, but you don't want to, you don't want to, you want to make it fair, right? I think it's, it's what, what happens is usually we have to send them back both the splicer and it's fixed. We fix those things. We want them fixed too because the clients are going to call until it's fixed. So mm -hmm. uh, usually it's a 24, 48 hour thing. Um, can't, can't always promise that, but it, I've never had one yet that's longer than 48 hours. You know, there's been longer than 48 hours because we have to wait for somebody else to come and get their stuff as well. It was in the same place. So. Yeah, I was just thinking like some, like even tile. Yeah, coming yeah. out, you know, it could only be a meter, meter and a half under. Like, yeah. is it up to your responsibility to go either go over it or under it? Or? So I, I think that's the. I'll use I'll use uh, uh, around the car break as a really good example. There's a lot of uh, irrigation pipes. Or? A lot of irrigation that nobody knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's an issue, but mm -hmm. and. Uh, and here's the whole thing. It, as a good corporate citizen, you end up wearing a bit of it no matter what, and you probably end up paying for more than you like. But the answer to getting that battle with the local homeowner is just not, you don't want that right. way of being, right? But that's why we try to get these routes out and try to show as many people as we can and get in front of everybody. So, and, and here's, here's one of the positives, and I'm sure some of your, I know you hear some negative stuff, but. Now that everyone knows about this, I'm hoping that people will come forward and go, hey, listen, if you're going to be in my ditch, here's the, here's the issues, right? And sometimes what happens is uh, when it's not as vocal as this one's been, where you're, we're sending out letters to everybody in this municipality and they're coming and telling them the good and the bad and the ugly of all of it, we just end up going and doing it, and then you hit an irrigation or something. 
and then they go, well, you should have known that was there, and go, oh, heck would you ever know it's there? <laughs> but, right. but, um, they're they're going to happen. I, I, I hope they don't, but something's going to happen, and uh, you'll, you'll work with it. You'll work with it. And the tile stuff is, that's an interesting one, because you don't yeah, mess with that stuff. So, uh, oh, it's just, yeah. yeah. It's, it's real. It's going to it is, and I guess going forward, you know, any drainage, basically any drainage project has to go through the municipality, you know, so okay, yeah. our public works manager would know yeah. where the line is, and hopefully, you know, it's just something else we got to be yeah, cognizant of and locates too, right? So, Chris, uh, I know some of the stuff you did in 2019, there's still some uh, ditch uh, evidence that maybe needs to be addressed sure. forward here. And it's all in the wet areas, right? Of course, yeah. That's, uh, so, so here's the whole thing. I, I think uh, in your municipality, just like others, please reach out to us and, and let us know. We have, we, we kind of have one full-time crew that is, let's call it a cleanup crew for the lack of a better term. It's running around and chasing the, the uh, chasing those kind of things. So please just reach out and tell us where they are and we'll, We'll put it in the schedule and kind of take a look and try to do the ends. Again, we don't we don't want that either. But, uh, those kind of things are very reasonable asks of us. Uh, the other one you'll run into, we already have us is the you know, it's the guys that pull their ditch all the way to the road and so on that made that their lawn now right away. And, and again, we try to work with them, and you'll see we use smaller piles than a lot of people. And the reason for it is less clean up. We may not be able to go, they can go a little faster, those bigger ones, and just plow through everything and get going. But we use smaller stuff to try and alleviate, alleviate some of that, just because the cleanup costs as much as the actual construction if you need to be done or something like that. Right? So. Yeah, get where you're coming from, the, uh, they think the new simple ditches are a lot. Yeah, I, I'll bet you, here's the whole thing, I'll bet you, in my role, the most I've talked to customers about anything is about that. They want to talk to me about that ditch has been mowed for 50 years and how you mess it up. It's not your, it's not the right way and so on. So I get you. Um, Mr. Chair, I've been, just been making some notes here about the agreement and the things that I think we may need to uh, address. Um, the first one is uh, nine. It says that early completion of the installations of the line schedule B will result in early payment of that year's payment to the municipality. So this is actually a question to Joni. How are we making that payment? If we're doing this levy over three years, but then we're going to pay out RF now earlier, with what funds are we doing that? And, and are we actually able to do that? Okay, so I will ask Lane to jump in here if she needs to. but. Uh, what we would be doing is we are borrowing the money up front um, through our bank. So the $200,000 is available. Uh, the idea being is that we were going to pay it out as we saw that completion was done. Um, just because we are collecting it over three years doesn't mean that we can't disperse it quicker than that. Right. I forgot that we have to do a, a loan for this. Even yes. if we have the cash, we have to do a loan. Right, before you get into the next one, sorry. Yeah. I, I think that's a question too. Is um, there is a real, there's a real, uh, it's real that we could do all of it this year. It's real that we could do two thirds of it. It's real that we could do a third of it. Um, and those things all matter to you and me, right? So, so if if that money, and 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 I'm I'm indifferent a little bit about it. I, you know, I, I, again, I want to hook up as many people as I can, but I also have, we have lots of people hook up in lots of places. So it's something that I think for you to discuss of how, I, I didn't know that answer either. I was interested in that answer because I, it, you know, that the 67 grand or whatever could be meaningful. Okay, do I go run, continue the run on two and 10 and finish that this year if I have the possibility of doing it now we've got two thirds this year or whatever. Make it up, but um, it's certainly something that I think we should put in the agreement to make it clear and make sure you're comfortable with it, and, and we are because um, let's say it this way: if 
there's enough sign-ups. I may want to go do it anyways, and the 67 grand being next year, it may not matter, but it may be the pushing point. If you go, yeah, okay, it's available, go finish that route and go hook those people up. That may push us over the edge to move our crews from Esther to Saskatchewan back to here, right? To yeah. make up with us. There, so, there's yeah. two things here. The, the number one was that we did it on the basis of spending the taxation over three months, three years, yeah. because that would be an yeah. easier, easier dollar figure to follow for the rural. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. The other part of that is that I think we looked at it and said our, our municipality is so large that there's no way they can get around in a year. Yeah. And if you can do it, I, I think that is the moment. Yeah, okay. Do it in a year. Yeah. As we said, we got the money we're borrowing. As long as the completions are and everybody is hooked up, this says it'll be hooked up. I think that is the that's important. Yeah. I, I think the, the one for me is that the, the the line that goes uh, the line that goes east and then south almost falling east at the right? That one had the most interest, by far. Yeah. 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 Yeah
credited so that if the office is getting a call from Sean Corey saying, hey, RF now is not refunding my installation cost, you can go and say, no, I see your name is on this list. It was a credit that was applied to your August bill. Is that something that's important? Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think we have to have something yeah. around that for sure. And, and I, I think the big one for us is uh, I haven't, I haven't figured out exactly. So that's realized revenue for us already. Right? And as we all know, we bank covenants to fit within too. So just dump the 37 grand out the door uh, that was income before. And so I'm just trying to, but I agree, let's find a way to, we need to find a way that you're clear on and we're clear on, and then the rate payers clear on. And so I think Joni and I can work on how we are on that. I think globally, globally for me, Contract two hundred thousand dollars. Everybody with that. The refund can be back to people that have already had it worked out and one four hundred or however they do it. That's the global thing that I want to see. Uh, you know how the construction of that information yeah, can move forward. Uh, that's for us to get through. Yeah, yeah, we just need some confirmation. Yeah. That's been done, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The way I look at it really is. Um, I'm really looking. I, so I made a plan based off of one hundred and sixty. Whatever that number is, because I, I know I'm going to give that back or back over, whatever that is, 30 some thousand bucks is, right? So really, I made a plan based on like 60, whatever the number is going to be. Um, I think this has already been covered, but we need to add the seven years pre install. I, I feel like that's a reason. That's the number I had in my head was seven. Yeah. That's fine. That's good. I just want to have so one out of the world. Seven, like starting, where, I guess, spring of. 2021, we would be, you know, seven years of free install, and after that, it'll be, you know, if you're two miles away, then you and RF now got to work it out on the eighth year, sure. right? I guess is. Yeah, I think that's that's reasonable. Um, the schedule of fees is just slightly different from what was in the initial proposal, so I wondered if that was intentional or whether that was just an oversight, because it's... $200 difference. It's $10 per month. Yeah, is that oh, for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so on the initial proposal, it had listed one twenty nine ninety five. Sure, yeah, no, I, uh, uh, let me think on that. We had that discussion, and of course I got out, I got internally to do that. Um, when do you have your public hearing? Next week. Next week. Next week. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, when I get back, I, uh, um, I'll have a look at that. I, I think it was intentional, and the reason why is because everything's all right for us. And at the time, um, I wasn't sure how the third, I, sh I wasn't sure exactly how much money we were going to be getting back to ratepayers for the installs previously, and I wasn't, uh, we weren't. Uh, let me go back. Because yeah. uh, I think the internet and the holy phone were discounted ten dollars per month. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, oh, I that. oh, again, question more for Joni. Um, in clause eleven, where it talks about the end of the contract, it's this be as expiration of the agreement. But I almost think we need something that. If this agreement expires, but residents still haven't been installed, that that, that the contract doesn't end. I think it's just a... Yeah, it's a seven-year period. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I guess we need to have that surviving this contract. Yeah, for the seven but if 100% if of residents aren't installed in the first three years, I think the way this is written, the contract expires at the end of that three years, and, and that requirement is released. So I'm not a lawyer, but... I. I think there's a bit of a gap there that we should just close off, and I think everybody's on the same page and just making sure we're yeah. covering that off properly. So I think that was all that I saw on the contract. Well, Mr. Chair, I just wonder, I, I think it would be very beneficial to, for Chris to come to our public hearing. I, I don't know what the plan is. What I, I got lots out of it today. I'm a lot more informed than I was before I came in. You know, I read through it a few times, and I just... Wonder, I just think it would be if he's available. The public hearing is for the, the, the municipality here from the individual. Uh, and it's, it's designed to 
designed for a hearing process. It's not an information meeting. Okay. As far as such, that should have been done in open houses and that kind of thing. So it's limited as to what we want. We don't want to get into comparisons as far as, you know, somebody else can do this much less or, you know, it's those kind of discussions. You don't want to get into that. The public hearing is for the public to come and say they agree with what the taxation is coming or they don't agree with the taxation. I just think there's going to be a whole bunch more questions that people are going to have. That's my concern. That I know they're going to have them, but there's going to be a whole bunch more about exactly the questions that we've had, and there's going to be some. That's just my thought. So, do we make a, maybe an FAQ? Just, just, so, I, I, I think the questions you ask are probably much of the same questions. And, and really, I think getting the point across that with this investment from the municipality, that this gives all rural, outside of all these great players, access to a free install of fiber optics under this deal over the next, over the next, I guess, we're going to seven years almost, but you know, like it, um, and I think we do need to put some terms around, uh, really it's everyone that wants it within the next three years needs to be installed by our now is kind of the point we're trying to get to. Yeah. And then after three years, there's still a zero install fee. Um, and again, my the company's job and and hope is to hook people up. It's not the two hundred grand, it's the, it's the monthly go on. So. But I think we could probably make a, a bit of an FAQ for you. Or, or that's a, probably a good thing. It's something to like know about. Because yeah. I, I think that's the key to it, is all of the questions kind of are based upon that, right? It's okay, when do I get it? How do I get it? How much does it cost me? Because that line's over here, they need to know it doesn't exclude them from, from, uh, from that. So we could, I can help with anything. I, I know I know your public hearings for you, but if I need to help with some wording or something, or the handouts or the way out of that. formal setting, so we have yeah. to be careful with that. I don't think the intention was us not to have an information session, but just the way COVID's played out. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, may, and maybe. If there's still a bunch of questions after the hearing and, and, and we do decide to go ahead, maybe, maybe we do hold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're out later on, maybe. Yeah. They're useful for us, too, because but. people sign up right there. And, uh, yeah. and you know, once you've explained it all to them, they want the one on one time with your rates. Or so we still plan to do that. Whether, whether this is in place or not, by whenever we're allowed to do that, we would still have one in Carroll or one in here or, or both. So I guess just for council's information, of course, the public hearing, we have to be able to determine who is in support of or who is in opposition to, because then that is information that we have to send off fairly quickly to uh, the municipal board and for the board in Ottawa. Right now, as a council, because we are exempt from the current um, public health orders, we are entitled to hold a public hearing. We are not entitled to hold just an information meeting. So that is where we're going to have to be very, very cautious, even if we do have uh, Chris in attendance at the public hearing. We can't allow it to express into a public meeting information, especially where people may be coming up one-on-one -on -one within a one-foot distance or whatever to be saying, well, how does this affect me and those kinds of things. So we would have to be very cautious um, whether there is a way to have Chris in the event that through the public hearing we had to take uh, a recess from the public hearing in order for council to get some information from Chris and go back into the public hearing forum to answer some questions. That's a possibility just to, again, make sure that it isn't becoming just an information session for those in attendance. Right now, we only have about 10 people signed up to attend the public hearing, which makes it possible. The other thing, of course, we're watching is that we don't exceed the numbers that we can safely distance. Um, but those are all things that, once we see the FAQ, if we think, or if we're getting other questions raised to us, that we think it would be helpful to have Chris in attendance, we could make that determination. When is it starting? It's next Thursday. 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 Is it during the day or 6.30 in Carroll? 6.30 in Carroll. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. As long as you... I, 
here's the thing I, you know, you could Zoom me or just call me or, and if it's a side session of five minutes of, hey, here's the four questions we didn't think of and here, I'm happy, you just, you just call me. You got a cell phone now, so. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think, Mr. Chairman, in order for some residents to know whether they're in favor or not, they're, they need to have their questions answered, right? So it's, sure. it's not just a taxation thing. It, it's a taxation that's resulting from a proposal that they need to have full understanding. So, yeah, and that's the kind of thing we should have covered off of the information sessions that were well, unfortunately with COVID-19, they haven't been able to do. But my suggestion is if you're talking to individuals that have questions, they should be given our alcohol call right now and ask those questions of them so that they are aware of that when they come and they can you know, deal with it. But it's a matter that they, they have access to RFN. RFN will answer any question they can have. I'm sure they have to respect the quality uh, to address every information session as far as RFN or the fiber optic. It's going to be difficult in a public hearing the setting that we have. So, uh, yeah, I need mean, to do it on a, on a call basis for every five recess or something, but uh, we sure want to be careful. And that was certainly part of uh, the intent of putting the draft agreement on the public agenda today was to get some of this information out there so that perhaps some of the questions that people might have had, uh, they'll be able to replay this on video and they'll get some of the answers that they were looking for. Okay. I think I need to make a, an op I needed to come out of this meeting as well for, for our benefit too, right? So I think I, I need to make an FAQ for my internal staff anyways. Because we have been getting some calls and, and questions that probably I couldn't answer until, and, and maybe I can't still answer until after public hearing, but there, there was some until I talked to you about some of this that I wasn't comfortable with, straight to be honest, right? So um, I need to make an FAQ internally, so I'll share that with Joan and she can share it with council. And, and uh, if there's anything that you think I'm missing or that you want me to answer, that, but I, I think it's around this. Who gets it out? How much? You know, I think that would be very helpful. I, mm -hmm. I've got rate payers that are asking for the assembly and stuff, and I, I didn't have anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, we should say too that we have uh, the people have to call in or, or advise us that they're going to be at the public hearing next week, um, and we're getting people that are for and against. Like, of mm -hmm. course, it's not a case that it's one side that are coming to this public hearing. Um, so uh, that's what we want to make sure people are. It was overwhelmingly positive, and it, it has been. Um, uh, it, it should be. I mean, this yeah. is the, the time of connectivity of fiber uh, optic. Oh, yes. It would be one of the first municipalities to be able to offer to all. Yeah, it's, it's uh, and, and you're, you mean, we have enough infrastructure here currently, plus that stuff I sent you that it, it's easy enough to cover in a short period of time where, again, we, everyone has access. That's all you can do, right? Is access it doesn't mean they're all going to take it, but they've got the opportunities. The one thing I did notice we were talking is that in the draft agreement, I didn't include a clause um, about the requirement to return the line to its previous state. I should, probably should put that in the agreement as much as you've already said it's something we do. Of course. Um, I should make sure that I yeah. include that. Yeah. We, and it's fine to put in the agreement, but I think probably the next step too with with uh, municipalities to get a, you know, whether it's a municipal access agreement or, and it'll cover all of these, some of the questions you're talking about, who, whose fault is what, <laughs> and uh, I, I think we have those with other municipalities, like maybe send you a draft of one of those, and it covers a lot of the stuff, burial depths, and, and you know, you, you will all have your eyes on exactly how we do this, and what we ask for to, it's, it's all regular right, permitting stuff, you know, work with your public works and you know, locate the need to locate and all that good stuff. So. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thanks very thanks much. for coming. Thank you. <coughs> Look forward to hearing from you. Okay.
see we like Westland and Lone East open, so oh, yeah, all the ground it's just yeah. gonna be it's a no brainer in that really yeah. Once people see action they usually jump on the bandwagon, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's my thought anyway. They charged me one sixty five for a modem fee. Yeah. And that depends on each individual But I think that is something that everybody got charged. <laughs> like the hookup plus the modem. You still have to put your own rug in to the wireless to wire out your house. Your wires, yeah. <clears throat> but I found up my own system. I have it direct to the desktop in my office, which is 50 feet from the uh, source. And the speed is just crazy fast. I sent you a uh, video. But last night I did a test and I was getting like 500. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like nuts. But once you do it wirelessly, it's, it slows down. It, it slows down it like does. considerable. Yeah, and that depends on your router. Yeah. You need your router well. well, I upgraded it too. Good questions. Yeah. I'm glad he came. Yeah. Very good information, I guess the word is. It was good information. Yeah. about 
doing anything for the trailer court? Or? Should we should we stage this increase? Well, again, I think we did the, the, the administration did a lot of research and review of that, and I don't think it's on a line to have in the, in the context that it is right now with the bylaw. Uh, again, this is a charge to the landowner, not to a charge to the individual uh, trailer people, the people that are in the, the units. So, uh, is the landowner, he won't be able to charge the full amount to them anyways, will he? Mm -hmm. Um, like just, uh, I'm not used to, yeah. I'm not up on my rental stuff yeah. too much, but. He seemed to be of the belief that um, as a charge from the municipality that he would have the opportunity to forward that on to renters. Um, I'm not going to say whether or not his assumption is correct or not. And stuff changes so quickly with the rentals when that I would need to, to speak on what any of my prior knowledge was. Um, when you have the question as to whether or not we should phase this in um, on the bylaw, it is phased in over five years. I guess the question would be whether or not you want to implement it this year or whether or not you want to change the amount being suggested to be implemented for this year. So, so the amount is going up to 20? And no, maybe 2021. $20 it's already $10, so it's going up to $20, yes. It jumped, it jumped 10 this year and then 5 after that, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so that's $100, well, 100 and some dollars a year. It's not going to make people move. I don't think so. No, and this is something that has been left behind for me. Yeah. So I don't think it's out of line myself. As I said, everybody's got the information from the administration as to the review. Um, and I, you heard the comments today. I don't think it's going to create hardship on people at 10 bucks a month. No, I, the only is, is maybe go five bucks over six years, but other than that, it would be, I guess not. It has to go up. You can't not put it up. No. Well, if you wish to make an amendment, because this is the time to do it. Mr. Chairman, I, I noticed that Minidosa, I think, tied their changes to the increase in the mill rate and school tax rate. Is that something that's you know, an administrative burden? Because that seems to make some sense for, you know, we've ended this in 2025, so the potential is this sits for another 50 years. But if you tied this to the change in the municipal uh, tax rate change, then you then you avoid that, is that? I will let Elaine address that with advice from our solicitor. Yeah, the solicitor recommended not doing that. Okay. That this was a better way to do it. Just administratively, it's hard to go back because you're almost a year behind. Yeah. Yes, and, and going even beyond that, there is talk the provincial government has advised that supposedly this year is going to take school taxes on our municipal tax paper. So will that reduce that taxation to those owners? I don't know. And there's a lot of things here. This, this is a, as I say, the administration has done a lot of groundwork on this, so we should be following what the administration has given us, and if we want to adjust that, now it's the time to do it. I would. I would propose that we go five dollars in every year from this year going forward. Instead of a five year schedule it'll be a six year, six year I guess. So instead of ten this year you should just five and then just that's the only change. That would be the only change. Right? Yeah. yeah. Except you would go to twenty twenty six or anything. So.
2021 being a bylaw to amend procedure bylaw number 162018 with respect to a change in meeting venue be read a first time. Or we figure out what we're going to do. 
as asbestos? I don't, I ask Mr. Chairman, I don't believe there would be, and I, I think it's up to the contractor to figure it out. You know, they'll go in and they'll, they'll have a good idea what, what's in there when they do their tender. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just spent another $4,000. I don't well, think it's right. Yeah, if, if, in the, sorry, if in the event that we do decide to do a renovation, that's when we should go ahead with something like that. But I mean, if we're at this point not exploring a renovation in that office because we haven't made a decision yet. Yeah. No, I yeah. People, when we're going to have a tender for a renovation, they usually inspect the premises to see what's there. Yeah. Sorry, Sean. Well, I mean, my information had been that if there was any asbestos that just being the floor, that at that time that was the only place that asbestos would possibly be used in. I would think that it would be a cheaper check to check the floor. And for it's got carpet. So it's, it's carpet and it's original. Or, yeah, I mean, anyways. And I'm not sure. The likelihood of asbestos and carpet is not there. It's usually used to the glue or the highlight like that. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, general business to be resolved that in accordance with section two, uh, 326 and 309 of the Municipal Act, the taxes added and cancelled the listing provided by the Provincial Assessment Branch of Supplementary Taxes and the following amounts be approved. Taxes added for 103309. Are you pleased with that? Actually, the supplementary tax on Andrew for those that aren't aware. Any further? All in favor? We resolved that the interim audit for the period January 1st to September 30th, 2020, as prepared by Census Charter Professional Accounts Limited, be received. Dr. Sumida, technical counselor Hatch, discussion. All in favor? We have resolved that the RCMP policing report for the period July 1st to December 1st, 2020 be received. Please move that. Councilman Collins, Secretary. So, yeah. Discussion? All in favor? Disposition of <coughs> municipal records be resolved that in accordance with the Municipal Act, municipal records having surpassed their required retention period be disposed of in a manner outlined in Regulation 53. Discussion? I'm just curious, what is the, the amount of time? I just Let's review. It varies with the type of um, material you've got. General correspondence can be disposed of after one year. Uh, financial records have to be held for seven years. The regulation lays out not only the timeline that you have to keep it, but how you go about disposing of them. Okay, I was just curious. All in favor? Reimbursement for tools, whereas a theft occurred at Wamalisa Transfer Station, and whereas the said theft was reported to the RCMP, and whereas tools that belong to the waste transfer station attendant required for work at the waste transfer station were among the items stolen, therefore be resolved that the waste transfer station attendant be reimbursed $784.14 for replacing the tools. Mr. Chair, what what tools are required, and why are we providing required tools if they're required? That was my question. Maybe get Darcy to come to the table. <coughs>
prescription, but he had a problem with the game without his own tools, just, and of course he left him in the shack, and of course that's what he did. I can't verify what we brought, or that's all I know. Mean. But the directive has always been, whatever you need, you let me know, and we will provide it, so. Is this is better with Through text, yeah. No, but I mean, the director was just there's nothing written in the car. A lot of it was passive conversation, right? If anything you need or you get problems, let me know. That's who you call. So, Darcy, what tools were lost? He had a small toolbox with all sorts of wrenches and hammers and kind of a smaller tool chest that he had in his He just took down the structure of the shack and did a minor repair or on the winch on one of the games and that's that's the story I got. Once again I can't verify or deny that, that he actually had schools there, right? So the the break in occur like it was while the dump was open? No, was no, it was over a weekend. This project runs right along a road that would, if this council seemed that it would, might actually, we could maybe tie into this too and help us on the road, on the road yeah. Yeah, Darcy, you know, I think that was part of your comments as well, is that it is a road that we have some issues with. Yeah, there's a, that road section of road there is a grand candidate.